Hey guys, EVP Man here. Now in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at one of the largest 3D printers that we've looked at on the channel. It has one of the largest build services to date that we've actually tested. It's big and it's also, well, what can I say, it's big. We're talking about the Flying Bear Reborn 2. And this is a Core XY printer that has a build plate of 325 by 325 by 350 and it is large. It has a glass build plate, also a direct uh, drive extruder. Uh, 0.4 millimeters in the right nozzle and because of the size and also the construction this thing can print some really interesting materials because the nozzle itself can heat up to 350 C and the bed 110 C. Print speeds of 150 uh, millimeters per second and as we mentioned because of that high temperature nozzle you're going to be able to print PLA, TPU, PETG, ABS, PA, PC and nylon so you have a wide variety of things that you're going to be able to print. Um, it also has power loss recovery as well as it has this kind of tent or hood that you put on top of it that actually allows it to capture the heat, especially when you're printing these high temperature materials. So you can run it without the, the actual cover on and that's going to be great for PLA. But if you want to be able to do these high temperature materials, right, like PETG, maybe ABS or others, then you would put the cover on top of it. Um, in addition to this, it also has a filament runout sensor and it also has power recovery. So let's go ahead and check out this printer. We'll see uh, the prints that we've uh, printed on it and why you may want to consider this printer because it's a large, large format printer. Let's go ahead and check it out. Now the Flying Bear Reborn has one of the largest print beds that we've had on the channel. So from a spec, you're looking at 325, 325 by 350. That's going to be ginormous for printing. Uh, you do have also max print speeds of 150 millimeters per second. And given the enclosure type, you have some flexibility when it comes to the type of materials you can print. You're talking about PLA, ABS, TPU, PVC, PTG, HIPS, uh, PA, PC, and nylon. Now, as you look at the printer at first, you're going to notice that there doesn't seem to be anything at the top. I'm going to show you that there is a tent-like um, I would say canopy that you put on top of the printer that helps it retain some heat so you can print some of those other materials. Now, the nozzle diameter, uh, you're looking at 0.4 millimeters, which is what you would expect, and then the hot end temperature, and this is where you're going to be able to print these um, more abrasive materials, is uh, goes all the way up to 350 C. So uh, you're going to get some really nice hot temperatures there to print uh, the type of materials that you may want to do, especially if you're looking at some of those stronger materials. The bed temperature ranges anywhere from 60 to 110 C as well. So um, lots of flexibility there. Now from a connectivity perspective, you're going to be able to do things via Wi-Fi, um, you know, using a SD or USB. Uh, so you'll be able to get things on here. And you're just using standard Cura to actual, you know, run your or slice your files. Uh, let's take a closer look so you can see what the extruder looks like and we'll get a little bit closer. Now looking at the extruder, so this is a direct drive extruder. Once again, you're going to be able to get pretty hot with this, giving you the ability to print those abrasive materials. You do have a dual cooling fan that you see right there that's going to um, keep your material as it's printing, um, cool it off so that you can continue to print with a lot of accuracy. Uh, you also then have a core XY structure here. Now here you can see your extruder and that extruder is a direct drive extruder, which is kind of like what I prefer. Uh, it prints really well and as we take a look at the print quality, you're going to see that in a couple seconds how nicely these prints are. It is a Core XY printer uh, and I'll move this away. The bed is a glass bed. It is not removable, right? You cannot separate it. We'll take this out of the way. It's going to be, it's a one piece solution. So uh, I don't know if you'll be able to put a PEI sheet on here. So you'll see this right here. Uh, so this is all one piece and the actual heating element that you know rests beneath the printer uh, bed is also included so i don't really think that you're going to be able to separate these um, easily so if you have to replace it you have to replace the entire thing uh, prints come off um, easily uh, so i haven't had a lot of sticking even though i have this here that's been sitting here for a couple days now we'll go ahead and remove this because we were printing and testing some other models but the uh, again very stable uh, relatively quiet actually very quiet and then with the enclosure, it does do a real nice job of capturing heat. You'll notice that the cable management here is very clean. Uh, this is kind of almost like a kit printer, so you have to put everything together. It takes some time. This is not going to be a 15-minute build. This is not going to be a 10-minute build. Uh, this actually took us a couple hours to build because of all the parts and everything that we had to go through. Now, in the bottom here, you'll see uh, one thing that you don't really find often is a color menu. So this has a really nice, colorful menu. 
I did find that there's some spelling errors in the UI. Um, that's something that can be fixed easily with firmware, but you do have your preheat options, and you can see that that's pretty standard. I found that there's some rot responsiveness with the UI, so sometimes things just don't respond, but um, you just tap it again and it does. Uh, here's your filament, right, so that you can load and unload filament, and you can see everything's pretty visual. Um, just that upper right hand corner seems like it has a little problem. Over here you can actually choose um, the file that you want to print. We'll go back. So you can see what's under the tool menu. Right? And we can see the firmware version. Right? And even an email of a salesperson that you can contact, which I thought was interesting with, and also support details. But you'll notice every now and then this little corner has a problem. There you go. And what we'll do is we'll go back over here. And then you have an emergency function, right? And that's pretty much it. So pretty standard settings. Just notice that there's a little responsiveness happening with this UI. Uh, you do have on this side right here, and we'll pan over slightly. Um, here you have your micro SD, and then you have your USB input. Now, for those of you who are curious at looking at what the top of the printer looks like, you can see um, how this opening is pretty large, and you can see all the belts. Um, these we, we put together everything is again it's almost like a DIY kit and uh, once everything was functional we were fine. Uh, we did have some problems also with bed leveling but we figured that out really quick. Now the printer does have two doors. I'm going to go ahead and close this on each side and I don't know how functional they are. They, they are a little flimsy so you can you can see when they're going in you know they're, they're not um, heavy duty or thick in any way. They are flush though so they do fit the frame, right? So when you see right here, this is this is kind of flush to the frame here, but they rattle a lot. And also, they kind of have like that amber look that gives you, or that orangey look that's almost like laser uh, proof. Um, it, it gives the, the printer some aesthetics, but just something to highlight. Now on the side here, you do have your filament spool, you have also your filament sensor detector, and then you have a Bowden tube that directs the filament with the filament holder also on the top that you'll see right here. So here you have your, your filament guide right, for this Bowden tube that drives you all the way up to the, um, again, extruder. Now when you're printing some, um, now if you're going to be printing like carbon fiber or any of those materials that require higher temperatures and you really want to keep the actual print environment uh, warm uh, at or a temperature, you'll want to put this on top of the printer. Uh, it looks like a tent. Yes, it does. And when you look at the inside, you'll notice that it does have kind of like that aluminum material that is designed for heat, almost like a little umbrella. And what you do is you just put it right on top of the printer. I'm going to go ahead and do that on this one so you can see. And that's pretty much all there is to it. I'll tell you, it works. It does, uh, it does raise the temperature. Um, it does keep the temperature. Um, it looks a little odd, uh, but it works. Now, I would have probably preferred uh, it to have a, a glass top or some other top uh, other than having this because uh, it does make the printer very difficult when it comes to placement, um, especially if you're going to put this on a rack because you have a lot of unused space on the top. All right, so now let's take a look at some of the prints that we ran. And I have to say that uh, despite some of the small issues that I discovered, this thing prints amazingly well. So you can see that that top layer looks like right there. This was supposed to be printed in base mode and we didn't, unfortunately. Uh, this is Polymaker PLA. This is uh, uh, one of their blues that has kind of like some glitter in it, right? Did really well. We also then printed a tree and this is also in Polymaker matte PLA. So you can see this one right here. Um, and then just overall, take a look at that. Um, nice. Uh, we also then printed out uh, Kratos and we wanted to see uh, this is a hex 3d model and if you look at if we get right right in front in this area here the abs area uh, very it's it's like it's very difficult to see any of the layer lines you can see it right here as well very very clean really really high quality see the back right there even the back over here very nice the only area I started to see layer lines was at the top and I find this with a lot of printers this area right here you get some layer lines but if you look at the face, really good quality coming out of this printer, right? Now, none of these were printing super fast, so well, this is probably maybe at a 75 millimeters per second print. The same with the others. So guys, that wraps up our review of the Flying Bear Reborn 2. See you in the next video.